Hello, saints. This is Sister with a Testimony and Hope on a Star. It's a beautiful day today. It is just absolutely gorgeous. The sun's out. It's about 70 degrees. And Miss Hope is learning how to be hobbled. This is her first time being hobbled. And some people might think it's cruel, but it's actually not. It's good to teach them not to paw the ground and to run away. And uh, it's uh, padded leather. I bought the nice, the safest padded kind I could find with a chain between. So if she got in trouble, she'd snap that chain. Of course, the uh, leather part's not going to come off anytime soon. But uh, what it does, Saints, is uh, it keeps her in one tight area. And uh, she's really smart. She's already figured out that if she backs up, she can go anywhere she wants to. It's so funny to watch her because she's um, actually very intelligent. Um, I had one big gelding one time and um, I put his hobbles on him. And man, the first time you put them on them, they, they can literally go berserk. So it's kind of hit or miss. But you know what? If you've got a smart horse and they're cooperative and as sweet as she is, she's like, well, you know what? I know my limitations, Mom. And uh, she figured it out really, really quick. She cannot uh, get those legs in gear to run away. So horses are fright animals. They, um, you know, they're herd animals, and they stay usually stay in a tight group in a herd, uh, like a herd mentality. And she's all by herself, other than the cows next door. And uh, if she got afraid, um, it's either um, I think what you call it, it's a flight or fright. I'm not really sure. Oops, got in a little bit of a hole there, Mom. Oh, that was scary. Uh, but anyhow, long story short, um, flight or, flight or fight, I think they call it. But, um, horses aren't normally going to stay and fight. They're, they're going to run away. But with hobbles on, it's kind of hard to run. Um, and why am I talking about hope on a star being hobbled? Well, since I don't have fence, she can get out and she can enjoy the pasture uh, without me being worried about her running away or getting in trouble. She, she can only go in a small area. But again, if she backs up, she can go about just about anywhere she wants to. Saints, that kind of applies to Christians today if you think about it. Uh, how many of us are hobbled in one spot and usually the only way to get out is to back out? Uh, it's a little bit more difficult when you got a set of hobbles tying you down to face it head on and charge because um, basically you can't charge because your feet are tied I had a pastor tell me one time that he wanted to move of the Holy Spirit uh, but his hands were tied because the church folks um, didn't want to move of the Holy Spirit they, they want things their way they, they want to do things their way and uh, just wanted a little bit of God now and then, Sunday morning, and certainly didn't want an altar call, didn't want to move forward in their relationship. They just were happy where they were at. So he said his hands were tied. It's kind of like a horse being hobbled. Uh, them, them front legs can't get out and stretch out. You can't uh, really uh, run with the Holy Spirit because, again, your hands are tied, your front legs are hobbled, so, I mean, I can understand a pastor saying that uh, my hands are tied. They don't want this and they don't want that. But I'm going to take you back to 1 Samuel chapter 15. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 15, God had anointed Saul to be the king over Israel. And uh, he was basically actually the first king. And Samuel was sent by God to anoint him and call him uh, out and uh, to put him in the kingship. And uh, King Saul had the liberty to move forward. He, you know, was given full reign and authority. Uh, he defeated foes and fought battles. And he was the king that King David uh, came up under uh, when King David uh, fought Goliath and won. Um, king Saul didn't have his hands tied. He didn't, uh, he didn't have hobbles on his front legs. King Saul wanted what wanted what King Saul wanted to do and um, even though he wasn't hobbled or tied down he still disobeyed the Lord a lot of times saints 
That's how Christians are. Even though they're not hobbled, even though they're not tied or, you know, put in a, in a, in a pen or in a box, they choose to put God in a box. They choose to, to basically tie God's hands so that he can't move in their life. And what that causes is it causes them to not be able to move. They either have to back out of situations because they've tied God's hands in their own life. Or, you know, they feel like they're tied down and they just can't uh, get out. They're, they're between a rock and a hard place. Uh, you know, this horse is intelligent. She's already figured out her front legs are tied together and she can only go little places. And, and by tiny, um, you know, she's putting her back legs under her. Once she figures it out, she'll be able to pick both feet up at the same time and kind of hop. But she hasn't figured that out yet. Uh, sometimes, saints, we learn to just stay in those hobbles, stay tied down, and we just learn to get by. We learn to just adapt and overcome. Uh, let's not be like the horse or the mule that needs a bit or bridle uh, to control them. Uh, let's not have a hobble, a set of hobbles on our front legs. And let's certainly not put the hobbles on God. Let's not tie his hands so that he can't move in our lives. Um, sin will, will tie God's hands. Unbelief will tie God's hands. Doubt, lack of faith, uh, lack of fellowship. These, all, these are all things that will tie God's hands, and uh, he can't move for you because um, basically more than likely you're the one that's tied down or hobbled or tied your own hands and that in turn. Hey, guess what? Figure it out. If you want to remain in your sin and in your lack of belief and, uh, you know, doubt, you can't be completely blessed and be free in the spirit when you've got those things going on. And uh, you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to church, I'm reading my Bible, I'm doing all that stuff, and I still feel like the, the, the Lord's not moving on my behalf. Um, tell you what, saints, check your prayer life. Because I can guarantee you, if you've got a prayer life and you've got a close personal relationship with the Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're going to have a prayer time. It's going to come, it's going to become a habit. It's going to become something that you want to do. Just like this horse wants that green grass, you're going to want to go to those green pastures. You're, you're going to want to take those hobbles off. You're going to want to untie your hands, and then and once your hands and your feet or or whatever is tied, then that really opens up the whole entire blessing book for you, uh, for God to be able to bless you. Um, let's get God out of a box. If you watch Hope, she's just going around in little circles. She hasn't figured out how to maneuver with her hands and uh, with her uh, legs tied. Um, God can still maneuver um, even if you keep him in a box. But why would you want to keep him in a box and keep his hands tied from moving? Why would the congregation tell a pastor... Uh, no on the Holy Spirit. It sounds to me like somebody needs to get in the Word of God. They need to study to show themselves approved. They need to not only get out of the sin, the doubt, the unbelief, the irreverence that they have toward God. Uh, lack, should I say lack of reverence, lack of trust, lack of faith, whatever you want to call it. Um, their own hands are tied, so they're therefore tying God's hands. He's like, you know, if you want to stay in this little box, you want to keep me in a little box, I'm still going to keep you alive. I'm going to bless you to the certain point that you can be blessed but uh, my perfect will for you cannot be done because uh, basically the Lord says you've hobbled me just like this horse is hobbled she can't run away um, hey you know I can flip that around and say maybe it's time God hobbled some of us and uh, put us in the woodshed more than likely but uh, anyhow saints 1 Samuel chapter 15 um Obedience is better than sacrifice. And if you look at King Saul and his disobedience, he literally tied God's hands and a, night, a nice uh, package. And uh, God had no other choice than to, um, you know, basically correct him. And uh, not only did he get corrected, but the kingship was torn from him, given to another, which was David. King Saul had the kingdom taken from him and given to David. And uh, eventually, because of his disobedience, um, 
tying his own hands and tying God's hands from moving on his behalf, King Saul died um, a whole lot sooner than he should have or could have. So the moral of this story is obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken unto the Lord is way better than um, the fat of bulls and rams. Don't tie God's hands, saints, through your sin and your doubt and your unbelief and your lack of faith, uh, your lack of fellowship, uh, your, you know, laziness. And I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. Just wake up. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. And um, I'm sure if Hope could tell you, she'd say, you know what? Get your feet tied together. You can't... Uh, move forward like you want to you can go sideways you can back up um, you can turn in circles but you certainly can't uh, run with the horses if uh, they're hobbled so thanks God bless you thank you Hope for sharing your testimony with us I um, bet you if she could talk she'd be like I love the grass but I don't know if it's worth being hobbled maybe I'd just rather run uh, what about you saints would you rather run free and move forward or keep yourself in a hobbled position. Um, Y'all come and join Miss Hope. I'm sure she'd love the company. Uh, I want to encourage you, saints. If you feel like your feet are tied or you're hobbled, then go to the Lord. He'll He'll take care of it. He'll get you out of that little box. He'll unhobble you. He'll forgive you. He'll set you on high. You belong to Him. He loves you. He's waiting for you to come to Him and confess. And the Word of God says very clearly, if we confess our sins, He is just and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, let's take the hobbles off, saints. Let's move forward. And if you've tied God's hands, it's pretty much like tying your own, so figure it out. Um, no, I'm not going to unhobble her. I'm going to let her graze. And uh, it's not cruel. It's not uh, hurting her in any way. Um, she's actually figuring it out, and she's only been in hobbles about 20 minutes. So you think, uh, saints, after a while, we'd figure it out. It wouldn't take us all day. After all, we are supposed to be more intelligent and more in tune uh, than the animals. Yeah, sometimes I wonder. I want to encourage you to just stay with the Lord. Don't tie his hands. Uh, don't allow the enemy... To tie your hands through doubt, unbelief, sin, lack of faith, lack of fellowship, uh, lack of reverential fear of the Lord. Um, let's get it right. Preach it. Declare it. Decree it. Live it. Christianity. I'll say this. You can put a name on it, even Christianity, but my lifestyle is having a relationship with my creator. I have an audience of one. And my close personal relationship is confirmed through signs, wonders, and miracles. And your close personal relationship with the Lord God Almighty will be confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles. According to your faith, saints, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over you to hide, protect, and keep you. It's hope on a star and sister with a testimony. It's growing. Uh, I just send you grace and mercy in Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you.